And uh, thanks for coming on again, bro. Yeah, I know it's been ages. We we spoke about this almost two years ago. It's like a year. No, it was like a year ago, wasn't it? Was it a year? Yeah, no, it was bro. a year ago. Yeah. I feel like it's longer. I feel like anyway. No, 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 no. Because because the because the reason why I say that is because the first series that I was involved with was out. It was it was coming out or it come out? And yes, that's right. Oh no, it was just over a year. Just over a year. Just so over a year. First just se- over a yeah, year. the first series that I did uh, of Audley Road was on it. So it was coming out, and we spoke in the run up to that. And now the third series is that I that I'm involved with is uh, is out. So or is it's, it's still rolling out at the moment. So it's been yeah, it's been just over a year. It's insane how like time just flies by so quick, bro. I uh, mm. I really, and I didn't even do an intro. <laughs> yeah, we we just start again. We 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 we've just jumped straight in. Uh, guys, welcome back to the Brothers Geek Out podcast and our second guest of the year, uh, and a returning guest as well. I I want to say a massive thank you to Vincent Jerome for coming on and saying, you know, the Brothers Geek Out podcast. I want to say thank you for coming on, dude. Yeah, it's all good, man. It's all good. It's a pleasure to be here. You know what I mean? Like, it was fun. last time was fun, uh, yes. and so yeah, I just thought we'd just you know why not do it again? You know what I mean? Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. We we had a great conversation last time, guys. And if you go check out the geek out session, se- uh, geek out sessions on our playlist on YouTube, you'll catch the episode there, guys. But now, since we've kind of like grown the podcast, we're on all other streaming platforms as well. So if you don't want to see our pretty faces. You guys can go <laughs> listen to us, but you do want to see our pretty faces. You're still here on the YouTube channel, so I, I, I'm I'm grateful for that. But massive thank you to all the listeners and people that watch in, and we got a lot of love last year. And we're a, I hate saying a small creator and small podcast because I think we're all big in our own ways. But yeah, uh, the overwhelming messages that we got over last year, it, it's insane that you know just putting your passions out there in the world can connect to somebody and change it their perspective in different ways and we've had some great conversations but no thank you for coming on again and we're, we're going to be talking about a book that we said we were gonna a graphic novel that we said we were gonna talk about on the last episode yeah so yeah, we, yeah yeah i kind of i kind of let it slip last time and then um you've been busy and then you, you, you kind of picked up on it you kind of picked well but when we spoke you kind of picked up on on it and you were like we should do that and i was like oh shit <laughs> i was like oh okay now I need to now we need to do it because it's like because obviously when I spoke about it I spoke it was kind of a, um, I don't want to say a vulnerable moment but it was it was a kind of a thing of uh, yeah we were talking about just kind of what things mean to people and storylines and 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 the importance of uh, the human spirit and all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. so so when you when you kind of pull me up on it it's like yeah let's do that and it's like oh shit I have to maybe just bear my soul a little bit more than I'm used to. <laughs> So uh, no, yeah. which is fine, which is fine. You said something quite big, and you know, I'm I'm going to agree with it because I think reading it over this weekend again made me yeah. realize, you know what, you're right, bro. It for me, it's one of the best comic books that came out in that era, and to this day, still stands uh, really at the forefront of what comic books, the dramatic change in comic books, and yeah. what Frank Miller brought to that industry before mm. he jumped on like you know the dark knight returns and things like that mm-hmm. it was what he did with this character yeah. it was insane bro and reading it again i was like oh my god like you could see what they picked out on uh, inspirations for the tv show but yeah there's, yeah, there's yeah, still yeah some there's some elements on there that we'll probably touch base on definitely but i mean let's yeah. let's recap man what, what like still your is it still your your go to your best comic book ever just, just because, just in case you know, the, I mean, I'm guessing if people are watching this or listening to this, they, they they'll see what the episode's about. But just so you know, that uh, me and kids are going to be talking about uh, Frank Miller and David Mazzucchelli's uh, seminal Daredevil: Born Again. Mm. Um, so I was, so I, so I reread it over the past few mm-hmm. days. I did it in installments. I kind of did it. Um, I kind of did it in three acts. Mm-hmm. 
the first act where you know everything happens and then the second act where you know you kind of see him getting back to things and then the third act like the triumphant kind of you know thing and it kind of it, it's kind of, it almost feels like I wouldn't say it feels like three different books but like the, the last third that is definitely like the shifts are just so mm -hmm. kind of crazy um would I say it's still my, one of my favorites I guess it's weird man because I'm rereading it I still love it and I just I still there are things in it that I picked up on that I didn't resonate that didn't resonate maybe the first few times I read it and it's like you know you know how Kevin Smith talks about um how every year I don't know if he still does this but he, at one point every year he would go back and read uh Dark Knight Returns um I don't read this every year mm -hmm. every few years i'll i'll crack open born again um i don't know man like i just I, I it's hard to say because it's such a specific book do you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying like and for me it's kind of it's kind of uh if you read it as a comic book, you're like, yeah, yeah, it moves and all the rest of that. But this, because it's so cinematic, mm -hmm. um, I think that's what it appeals to me. You know what I mean? Like, and some people don't read comics for the reasons that, you know, I've read comics in the past. Like, some people like uh, more kind of, whether it's like space exploration, uh, not exploration, that's not even a word, uh, you know, uh, you know, space exploration at all, or like, um, more fantasy kind of elements like your saga or whatever and some people like the very kind of fantastical twisted kind of whatever like there's there's a, a genre of comics for everybody but for me i've always been interested in um i think i said before on a podcast like i've always been interested in cops and robbers you know what mm -hmm. i mean like all the characters that i l liked growing up uh was was cops and robbers on some level um, you know, uh, and even though they kind of, some of them lean into other things, they were all like uh, the flash in his, uh, in his initially is cops and robbers. Mm -hmm. The rogues were always trying to rob a bank and, you know, he had to That's come right. with mirror, you know, the mirror master was doing his thing with Captain Cold and whoever was in northern people. And he was just basically stopping them from, you know, doing all that. And then obviously you have the whole, the whole multiverse stuff and, you know, all that, but, you know, Batman, Spider-Man, um, these guys are all, it's all a version of uh, Cops and Robbers. And obviously, as time developed, it became more about, um, in, you know, in Spider-Man's sense, like science and, mm -hmm. you know, Batman's sense is Cops and Robbers kind of went from, like, to, to kind of terrorism and, you know what I mean? So um, it's hard to, I like, I, I it's, it's so, it's, it's weird because I don't, I know it's a comic, but I don't really rereading it i was just like this is something different mm -hmm. do you know what i mean like it's just i was let's put it this way there were some moments of it where i was just shocked i was like oh shit i forgot that happened that's that's intense very very <laughs> I mean? very so um very. but i i think as far as like it depends for me for my tastes it's definitely uh one of the best superhero stories uh, ever, ever told. I mean, I I kind of go back and forth uh, with our, you know, mutual friend, a friend of the show, Rob Ailing, <laughs> because, um, you know, I, 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 we, we, me and him connected over Batman, obviously. Mm -hmm. And um, for years, I mean, for the majority of my life, Batman was my guy. He was, you know what I mean? He was... He was my superhero, and then it got. I got to a point where there was just things where I was like, "Oh, oh, I don't, oh, I don't know if this, the, the same ideals match up." So ooh, I'm just rambling now. But when it comes to when it came to Daredevil, there was just there was just that initial thing where I was like, "Oh yes, this is this is my guy," kind of thing. This is, and so we go back and forth, and we had the conversation recently about. Because they re they re released um the separate issues of uh 
year one, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and uh, Rob, I remember Rob took a picture and he's like, oh my God, you know, the, the, the colors are just amazing. And I was like, yeah, like the, the born again team really came through. <laughs> you know what I mean, because ultimately, you know, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have a year one if you didn't have born again. Exactly. In exactly. the same way that one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite Frank Miller stories, which I don't think gets talked about enough, maybe because it's out of print. No, I don't, I think you might be able to get it in a collection or something. Yeah, you can, you can. But one of my favorite um, Frank Miller stories is um, uh, Electra Lives Again. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Um, which I have, which I, which I managed to get by itself, like the original epic hardback kind of. Oh, nice. Um, and I look at that book and I'm like, you don't get that book if you don't like, if, if Dark Knight Returns wasn't made, wasn't a thing, you would never get that book. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's you know right. what I'm saying? Uh, and in the same way that you kind of in, yeah, you just, you know, and if you don't get Dark Knight Returns, you don't get Sin City, you know? If you don't get Sin City, you might not get Man Without Fear. You probably might get Man Without Fear, but, you know, it's just one of those things, yeah. It's it's weird because I think Frank Miller went through, and I think we all do that during our journey in work, where your back catalogue mm. doesn't get recognised until something big like The Dark Knight comes out, and then everybody's like, oh, mm. you, I, I didn't know he, he did Daredevil. I didn't know he did these characters and Electro and mm. so on. So... Mm. I think that's just the way the industry works uh, and and the consumer as well, because we're used to getting all the ones that are going to be in our faces, you know, during that time, it would have mm. been Batman and Superman. It would have been the X-Men. It would have been all of those characters, but mm. you got Frank who brings in this real, just a realistic, uh, storytelling vibe to what he's done i mean superheroes yeah and the darker side of you know being and not really i wouldn't even i still don't class daredevil as a superhero because it, his abilities is just heightened senses right his strength yeah but, hasn't it, but got superhuman it's, strength. Heightened to, it's heightened to a point where it's kind of it is supernatural do you know what i mean yeah so yeah no of course of, yeah but I, I still know. see him as like the ground level, you know, Hell's Kitchen beat him up type of dude. And like, you know, this this yeah, born again yeah, story yeah, yeah. shows that, you know, what Kingpin does in this story is breaks, mm. you know, mentally. That was, that, was one, that was one of the first things that rereading it, I was like, oh shit. So Karen sells him out in the first page. And then the next couple pages, you meet the Kingpin. And you realize that he fought, he gets the information to him, the fact mm-hmm. that Matt is Daredevil. Um, and he plots some plans for six months. And then the next few pages is you see the effects of that last six months. Exactly. You don't see it in real time, but you see it play out in yeah. three, four pages. Well, four or five pages. Like, And then I think actually to the end of that particular book, that particular uh, issue. That issue, yeah. It's just, yeah, it literally, it literally, it, it, the, the pacing of the story is just mad, like you're in it. Yeah. And it was, I was reading it and I was just, uh, the whole thing, and I was like, at points I was like, if anybody said to me, where should, um, where should I start? Would I give them this? And I was like, you could, but it's real, it's really, because you get the backstory, you get the stuff about his dad being a boxer. You get, you know, you get the stuff that, you know, about him being blinded. You get that, you know, you get all of that in there. But, um, yeah, I don't know, because I think that there needs to be a level of familiarity, even though even though Frank Miller does a really good job of bringing people up to speed. Um, I think there needs to be a level of familiarity because of how quick it goes. Do you know what I mean? No, that's right. That's right. I, I think there was like a trying to remember if there was like a so the previous issues do kind of go into it before it goes into to born again yeah. so it, it will give you a bit of backstory on them so i can't remember what issue numbers they were but 
No, so was, I think it was, was like 300 and something or right. uh, maybe. Because uh, I remember, I, so I don't know if I said this in the, in our last conversation, but because this is a Daredevil-centric uh, conversation, um, um, you know, I can, I, I'll definitely bring it in. So um, for the UK, uh, I'm going to have a few references that like the UK uh, audience would understand. So, um, so in 2020, when Boris cancelled Christmas, um, <laughs> uh, I just, I, I just did, I just it was like, okay, well, I can't see my family. Hmm. Uh, right, okay, what am I doing? And then I was just, it, it, it you know, it's, it wasn't. I wouldn't say I was. I wouldn't say I was depressed. I was just kind of in a funk because you know, it was, yeah, it was, yeah, just, yeah. it was that time. It was just like, Ugh. and I just kind of went back and was like, what, what, you know, think of things that just kind of make make you happy, or things that you're interested in, or just you know, because sometimes you can forget. And um, exactly, yeah, so true. I started. So I, true. I just I don't know why. I just um, I took an, a real interest in like feudal Japan. Mm -hmm. oh my i don't I say i don't know why i do know why because i um i just i've always been interested in it and i didn't realize that my interest in feudal japan comes from ninja turtles and ninja turtles wouldn't exist without daredevil, daredevil. yeah and when i was an adult and i kind of gone did the because I, I sort of when i was an adult and i realized there was a connection i was like oh that's interesting but it wasn't until that time like at late 2020 going into 2021 where I was just like, oh shit, if I could pick a person, a singular person who had the most impact on me as a child, it would be Frank Miller. And I didn't even know. Because I was a massive Ninja Turtles fan. And then after Ninja Turtles, I kind of, I got into Batman proper. Mm -hmm. And this was post Miller Batman. Mm -hmm. uh, and so anyway, the reason why I say all that is because um, also, I read totally separate, and I love it, and I need to read it again. Um, I can't remember who wrote it, but uh, Sean Sean Gordon Murphy, as he was then, as he probably I don't know if he still is now. He might just be Sean Murphy. Uh, wrote no, he drew. God, I can't remember who, who wrote it. Um, the Murphy World, right? The Murphy World with the. Uh, no, not, no I'm not talking about Batman. We're talking oh. about no. We're talking, I'm talking about uh, he wrote. It. For image, no, he drew for image uh, Tokyo Ghost. Oh, yes, yes, um, yes, you're right. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I loved that book. And that was around the time I did the deep dive into it. Well, anyway, so once I'd done the, I'd been like, oh my God, Miller's work, so on and so forth, I kind of went back and read a lot of the stuff. But then I read the Denny O'Neill stuff that led up to a board again. And I read the stuff that kind of was before, just before Miller. Yeah. And just after Miller. So uh, just after his initial run and then you know um and the senti came in and he kind of switched it up and before again denny o'neill came in at some point and and you know then it kind of built, built up to born again and then after that i don't know how much after born again is it lee and lee weeks was 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 the artist and i can't was it chichester oh. um came and he did last rights um, I think it was just I can't remember, but yeah, he um, yeah. So I'm just right, I don't know what my point. No, no, no. Sorry, was... Ch Ch Chester, Ch Chester, Ch Chester. I'm just gonna double check. I think it was. You're right. It it was Chichester. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, and, um, just, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you were saying you were saying like the, the, about the issue, the Denny O'Neill issues before. Mm. Again, uh, wonderfully drawn by David Mazzucchelli. Um. They kind of started to show Matt becoming a little bit more unhinged. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you, they, they. Um, I, I don't know uh, if they. They must have known that Frank was coming back. So Danny O'Neill was probably like, right. So how are we going to tee this up so we can yeah. bring back? The, the the comic superstar, do you know what I mean? So <laughs> that's what he no, wants to say, man. Like, yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. I mean, even with those previous issues and how it leads into this, I mean, as you said, unhinged, bro. There's, you know, the the panels mm -hmm. where he he goes mad and you know he's he usually holds himself back. He's going full blunt on these guys and like you know beating them yeah. properly. 
where he you, yeah. there's a character that really holds back he really believes in the the justice that he serves and you know getting the mm. doing the right thing i suppose where now yeah. it's come to a I... point where you've really pushed this character to a depth where he is questioning himself you know what i mean uh, it shows the struggle mm. of you know we as the general human beings in in this world without it being yeah. science fiction or comic book related reality we have those times you know we we get to a point where we're unhinged i'm at that time at the moment now where i'm unhinged no I'm, i wouldn't say unhinged but you know i'm yeah. my 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 tolerance level at my age now is 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 so low bro like i used to come to a point mm -hmm. where you know i'm a guy who just you know i don't let people walk over me but i kind of put my things out there but Mm -mm -mm. now i'm coming to a point where it's like why isn't this done and why am mm. i confronting you about something and why are you beating around the bush to tell me something that has a simple answer just tell mm -mm -mm. me straight up but I yeah because that's yeah that's, that's, that's getting older that's, that's that's not not just older as in like or old but in all maturity it's also more important about knowing your boundaries you know what i'm saying mm. like um and that's something i think that we can all learn about um you know this yeah this idea of what we are and aren't willing to tolerate it's um it's it's important to kind of know that in everyday life and and, and feeding it back into the book i think that and we spoke about we definitely spoke about this last time that i was on um one of the things that i love about the character is and i understand why they kind of lean so hard into the fact that he can take a beating in the mm. Netflix show um, because that's cinematic, that's mm -hmm. visual. It's kind of like, you know, uh, it's like Rocky, you know what I mean? Rocky keeps, yeah, getting, yeah. In, keeps getting back up and all that kind of stuff. So I understand why they leaned into that. But for me, and anybody who doesn't really know the character that well, I will always say the thing that is attractive to me is is his um is his kind of mental fortitude, his kind of uh you know what I mean, his 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 ability to overcome things that aren't, you know, supernatural or, you know, mm -hmm. um fantastical in that way. Yeah, I mean it's a superhero book, so you know you're gonna you're gonna see him swinging through the streets and kicking, you know, ninjas and terrorists <laughs> and supervillains and all those kind of things in the, in the face and stuff. But, like, one of the things as I was reading the book, I was like, wow. I, like, I can't think of too many heroes or superheroes, comic book heroes, whatever, that have been given... Uh, a religion for one. I know there are some, and I'm not saying there aren't any. No, no, before people get in the comments and start going crazy. <laughs> um, I'm saying that, but I'm, but you know, follow me. Yeah, yeah, it's like I don't know too many superhero superheroes who who have been given a religion, but also have been given mental health uh, mm -hmm. issues. Do you know what I mean? Like Matt, and it's, it's, I think it's a beautiful thing as well because. When you can't, as I was rereading it, I was I couldn't help think about how, um, uh, like Bendis and Brubecker and uh, more, more kind of prominently for me, Mark mm -hmm. Wade touched on, um, very subtly on Devil a uh, Daredevil's um, mental states his mental health like because you know you have that one of my favorite stories one of my favorite my, my, fa my favorite then over on is is, is benders mm -hmm. um but there's one of my favorite stories within that uh run is um the king of hell's kitchen and it's set a year after matt um defeats the kingpin mm -hmm. And like takes off his mask in front of like the underworld ultimately. And he's like, uh, if you need a kingpin, I'm your kingpin. 
you know what I mean? And and then in that year, like in that year, Matt completely turns around the kitchen. You know what I'm saying? Like he completely turns it around. And but he hasn't really been active mm -hmm. as 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 Daredevil yeah, in in that or, or or you know yeah, you know, not not really. And then he has to come back to being he doesn't he, I don't know if he comes back, he does come back to being Daredevil, yeah, he does put on the suit again, uh, because he has to fight the Yakuza. Um, oh yes, yes, that's right. Was, but oh man, that that wait, that's that, a good run. That, that is a good run. Yeah, that Alex Malieve, that. the Alex Malieve scene where it's like Matrix Reloaded, where they're in the rain and it's just one dude, one blind dude, the cane and like thirty, like stooped up Yakuza members. I was like, this is the way they do the raindrops. Yeah, it's just beautiful. Um, but at the end of that. Uh, story. Um, there's a question of, I think it might be Ben Yorick poses the questions like, uh, now maybe it's Foggy. I think Foggy said it, and then maybe Ben said it. And anyway, it came back to, to, to Mila, his wife, and the question of, are you having a nervous breakdown? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, this, the, the question of it is, uh, yeah, the question of it, it like lingers. Once it's posed, you're like, you know, given everything that happens, you know, Electra, Karen, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, the stuff, everything. It's like, is he just going, you know, the, the, him being outed by the press, you know, him taking over the kitchen as the new kingpin, kingpin. Um, like, you know, that, 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 that has that question. And when Mila poses that question to him, He's just silent. Yeah. Like he just he can't say anything because and in that thing you just like, oh shit, yeah, he is. Like he's I, I, like even even issues before that, is again in the in the Bendis run where he's kind of he's been outed and he's running across the rooftops and he's just silent. There's no there's he's in the rain and there's no silence and you can't tell. There's one panel, it might be a splash page, can't remember, even though it's right there. I've got so much junk behind me. If I go <laughs> to get it, you're going to have to cut to you. If you're cutting this up, you're going to have to cut to you. So if we have a, if we have an agreement, <laughs> if I go to get the book, <laughs> I cut it there. I put my face up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. So I'm going to go and get it. Go on. Go. 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 Grab three, it. Three, two, two. Um, King of Hell's Kitchen. Uh, this is yeah, here. It is there we go. King of Hell's Kitchen. Love this book, man. Um, then obviously there's an epic fight where he's got Luke Cage, Spider Man, and Iron Fist helping him out, which is cool. Um, I think it's there. Froggy told me about uh, Mr. Europe's theory that you maybe, maybe you had a nervous breakdown. That you never got over the death of this Karen Page person, and that mm. Matt interrupts her and goes, "I know the theory." And she goes, "Is it true?" And then you have this panel where he's just looking, mm. and then it's just like, "Is it true?" And he replies, "I don't know." And then she says, "Do you think it's true?" Then he says. I think it might be. Like, that's fucking dope, man. Like, that's 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 fucking that's drama, man. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying. Like, you and you deal with that stuff. And I've got the I've got out here as well, so I won't show you that splash page if it's there. Um, but yeah, it's stuff like that. And and in 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 um, uh, in Mark Wade's run, which is actually is the only. <laughs> No disrespect to that run. run. I'm not a. I'm not a. Um, and again, shout out to Matt Draper, who has a great YouTube channel, and I know he loves the swashbuckling there, though. But I, I'm not. I'm not about the swashbuckling. Um, even <laughs> though I love, I love that channel, and yeah. uh, I think he's great, and I love the way he breaks things down. Um, I, I do disagree. Like I'm about the ninjas. <laughs> yep. I'm, I'm about the ninjas. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I can't find it, but anyway. So, and you know, in Mark Wade's run, where he, where 
the the, the purple man. I was about to say the yellow man. That's that's not a person. Um, <laughs> the purple man's um, kids, mm -hmm. like uh, you know, they they're they're messing with people's heads and stuff like that. And they kind of get into Matt's head, and he and in that two issue story, maybe three issues actually, um, Wade kind of goes over and just and 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 just shows that Matt is someone who has suffered with depression. And it's so rare that you you have a superhero that deals with that stuff. There it is. Oh, finally got it. So it is a splash page, but there's all this other stuff around the splash page. So I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, 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 we can see that. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying, man. Like, you don't know if he's it's definitely raining, but you don't know if he's crying or what. Like, that's just, that's mad. Anyway, um, point the point I'm trying to make is, you know, you you probably wouldn't have that or that richness if it wasn't for Miller doing Born Again. No, of course. No, definitely. It's because uh, it sets the tone for everything later on, isn't it? I mean, mm. writers and artists will change, you know, maybe sometimes a big change, but usually keep to that inspiration. I think most artists and writers mm. that get into that industry will take inspiration and motivation from what they, they grew up with. And if you speak to most people that mm. are in that industry, it's one of the first comic books they 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 they, they say, like this, this was mm. a game changer for me and this is why I want to work on this character. I think, mm. I think personally for me, reading it again this weekend, and how hard hitting it was with some of the scenes, you know, mm. you know, there's a scene yeah. there, which always gets me. And I remember when I read it the first time, you know, when uh, he's, he's in the bed, you know, he, he died for like a, a oh, second or two. Yeah. And you know, the, the, the woman that was there at the beginning when he was in the accident was back again. And, you know, he asked if it was my mum, and, you know, she was her heartbeat. He just listened to yeah. the heartbeat. He goes, like, she doesn't, she doesn't say subtle... anything. Yeah, she's yeah, he, a... yeah, he's like, yeah, she's. I think he said something like she doesn't say anything, but her heart, yeah. uh, but her heart doesn't lie or something. It, 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 it skips a beat. She's lying, yeah. and then yeah. there's a little wry smile on Matt's face. So and it's, it's, it's yeah, such it's a just, sweet yeah. scene. Yeah, it it's is. Yeah, and, and this is the thing about Miller. Like he's, it's really funny because I think. If you look at his work, the there's so much like hyper masculinity at a point in his career, but there's also maybe not in the same books, but you can you can pick up at certain moments uh, in um, in Miller's work where there really are like moments of real sensitivity. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying, when people think about Bretman, they don't think that. And I know that there's a reason why. There's put there's enough proof to be like, well, this is why people don't think that. And I get that. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that he's, you know, I'm not saying he's the, he's the, he's a, he's a poet, like, no, no, Hardy no. Or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm not, no, exactly, I'm not, yeah. not going there. But, um, it, yeah, moments like that, like, you know, it's really, even like when him and Karen are reunited in the book, that kind of just that, just that, that they're so broken at mm. that point. And Matt's, yeah, they just both of them are just so utterly broken. Do you know what I mean? And like when she's going cold turkey and she's kind of like biting down on his shoulder and shit, and it's just mm. kind of like, you know, they just. You know, they, they got, I know I mentioned Rocky before, and I'm not trying to make it a running thing, but you know, it's like that. You know, it's like Rocky. Like, you yeah, know, yeah, the, the, exactly. The, you know, she's got pieces, I got pieces. You know, it's like that kind of shit. You know what I mean, exactly, so, exactly. Um, yeah, man, I, and that's the thing. I don't, I don't know too many, too many superheroes that have that. Thing, do you know what I mean? When they don't make it like a, they don't make it like a big. Like for instance, you know, is it like Century who's bipolar? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, or something like that. But that's like a main factor of his personality. Yes, that's right. Or he's yeah. schizophrenic or something. Or do you know what I mean? It's like you don't know who you're getting and all that kind of stuff. And it's that's like a main thing. 
but with Dana, it's just one of the many things, you know, the fact that, that you know, he's, I'm a big YouTube fan. Like I, I go on YouTube and I, I go down YouTube rabbit holes all the time. <laughs> um, and I don't mind it because it's always stuff that I'm interested in. It's always stuff That's like, right, oh, yeah. okay, well, it's about this and so on and so forth. And there's a few, um, there's a few video essays about like the psychology of Daredevil. Um, mm. And I just find it fascinating because it's like, and everybody likes to talk, because obviously Batman's Batman. So everybody likes to talk about Batman and like, oh yeah, this and that and that and that and that and that. And that. But it's just like, I don't want to quantify people's pain. But when you think, of, when you kind of weigh all the things up, like all the bad things happen to Matt. Mm. Like if in his, what in his, what like all the bad things happen to Matt. Um, in a sense that there's just a succession. There's just, it's a succession of uh, misery. Do you know what I mean? Like, I was when I was rereading the book. I was just thinking about the kind of trauma that comes with uh, losing your sight. I don't know what that's like. Mm -hmm. You know, thank God. Um, uh, you know, the the being raised by a single parent and then losing that parent. One of the things I, I, I one of the, one of the things I I think they did a really good job of. In the uh, Netflix series, and again they did. Frank Miller um, created the character, and you know, in his original run, then went back and revisited him in Born Again, not Born Again, uh, Man Without Fear. But like the relationship that Matt has with Stick, mm -hmm. like Matt is looking for a father, and That's Stick right. is like, I'm not looking for a father, I'm looking for a warrior. This is why I find it interesting, like, um, when people are just uh, going back to Batman again, when people are, people just kind of just accept that everything Batman does is right. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, don't get me wrong, like, the guy's doing what he believes to be right, and he's dedicated his life to his cause and all the rest of that, but it's just kind of like, it's the same thing. Like, I've got I've got Nightwing back there. There he is. Do you know what I mean? And there's a reason why. I don't know why I like motherfuckers with, with, uh, with, with sticks and unitards, um, <laughs> <laughs> who are very, who are very uh, balletic. And you know, uh, so I don't know why that's a thing that's in my life. But um, you know, him and Daredevil. But uh, actually, I do think that. Shout out to uh, to Scott McDaniel because. If it wasn't for his run in the nineties, um, I never, you know, what I mean, his, his, yeah, was it? Was it? It was like late nineties, wasn't it? It was or late nineties, yeah, definitely. But they have a certain, yeah. like, just to kind of go on why, and and this is just me kind of thinking why you would like. They have a certain flow and and mannerism that you yeah. probably relate to, and that's why because of Maybe, how yeah. or, I think. Or I think bias, because I don't know, man. Yeah, like you know, I think. I think both characters, even you know, even though with the amount of stuff they've gone through, have this certain slickness to them. You know, Matt Murdock has a yeah, they're both you know, Dick Grayson has a, he's like really like they've got this cheeky manner to them, and yeah, yeah, I mean, it's they're just both fun them, to read. Both them, yeah, yeah, both of them are, are definitely good with the ladies. Yeah, um, but yeah, there's just they, but they, anyway, going, going back to my point, it's like mm. people always like you know. Batman's always right, so on and so forth, so the rest of that. But it's like, I know that the whole thing in the comics law is his, his biggest failure is 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 Jason. Mm. Um, that character can't catch a break, man. Um, mm. But if you think about it, he... He... And I know that Miller went crazy with it in, in All-Star Batman. He went really, he really leaned into it. But he, well, Bruce wasn't. He was trying to. He was trying to get him to. You know, he was. He was trying to get him to fight a war. He was. He was. What's the? What's the? He was recruiting a kid to fight this mm. war. Yeah. When all the kid needed was a dad. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, and so and I don't know. Their relationship is a lot healthier these days because you can't mm -hmm. keep beating. You know, you can't, you can't. You can't keep flogging that horse. Um. Where it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like Dick is his most trusted ally after 
uh, after Alfred, you know, in the law. Um, but there is that thing of just like, you know, there's, there's that thing. There's that, you know, these, 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 these people are lacking something and maybe, anyway, the reason why I mentioned that is because, you know, you think about in regards to like Matt, like also another thing about that makes me just think, myself, yeah, man, this guy's got, and it's not, I know it's not competition, but it's like, he's a working class kid. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he comes from working class background. He doesn't have this financial support that Bruce does. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like right. he that's doesn't right. and every and he, and you know, he, he just doesn't you you can have like powers and abilities and all the rest of that, but if you don't have the fortitude to kind of just keep on, you know, keep on moving. Which he says in the in the book actually after does. you know after Turk stabs him, um, yeah he just and he, he, even that it's like you know and he meets Electra and he loses Electra then he you know he becomes Daredevil and he goes on that's he goes through that stuff and Electra comes back into his life and he loses Electra again and then he kind of is she alive is she not alive and then you know that kind of thing and you know down the road and then obviously his life gets taken away is. His uh, home gets taken away from him and born again, mm -hmm. which is, you know, um, and uh, and his whole his way of making money and everything, his life gets taken away from him. But yet he's still able to come back from that and mm -hmm. have and find happiness in like what was some would seem as like a like a like a meager existence. You know, like I don't think it is at all. I think it's, I think the fact that he was this high flying lawyer probably making. Well, he owned the brownstone in yeah. New York, so he couldn't have been he couldn't have been hard up for cash. Um, but yeah, just to think, just just that you think he came back from that, and then you know, the Karen stuff and being outed, and it's just like everything just gets thrown at this guy. Do you know what I mean? And it's it not does. about the red suit, which is one of the reasons why initially I said um, Born Again is one of my favorite stories because it's not about it's about a guy a guy like me or you or you know it's about a person the, the gender mm -hmm. doesn't matter do you know what i mean it's about a person who just is just going through it and he doesn't use super heroics to get out of that situation it's just about finding a way forward and you know i i you know i haven't spoke publicly about this. I think I might have touched on it in our last conversation. Um, but yeah, I, you know, one of the reasons this book like, resonated me, with me so much, because like, I think it was, I don't know, maybe, yeah, it was about 2017. Like, I just, mm. I fell into a, like a deep, like crippling depression mm -hmm. for like nine months. Do you know what I'm saying? So what's like, it's like, yeah, and it was, and uh, you know, you just kind of do. Oh, that's also the time that I I read. Because um, again, it go go back to things like, what do I like? Oh God, I'm so unhappy. <laughs> <He's kinda> like, <laughs> I like comics, and so I, <laughs> that's when I bought um, uh, Paul Dini's uh, A Dark Knight, mm -hmm. uh, which is great. I love that book. I've only read it once. So I should really re read it again. I should, should really read it again bring it, it out bring it out know, it's time to bring it out <laughs> it helped you during that time yeah that born again it's just because you know i was just i just like as far as mental health on that kind of scale i didn't understand i think born again for me i was just kind of reading it because i was like i like this book so on and so forth and it wasn't until i was reading it and you know how miller does that thing where you meet matt and he's in his brownstone. He's kind of like, uh, like sprawled out. He's kind of whatever. And then he revisits that panel in different books at the beginning of different books, where there's one where he's in that like eight eight dollar hotel room. <laughs> when, when I read that, and it was like I had ten bucks to my name, so I got this room and change. And I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, damn. Because he's always in the fetal position that. in that book as well. Like, you know, you... you yeah, you, that, no, but he gets real. to that. He, that's the thing. It, 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 he, that, those panels from when he's in the brownstone to the apartment, to the, to the hotel, to the alley, he, you see him curl up 
into the field yeah. position over the course of that hunt. The time, yeah. And, That's right. and, and again, it was, you know, I think... Like, that's real, man. And I heard people on podcasts and all that kind of stuff talk about the same thing. Like, they've talked, they've spoken about how that, the image of that, like, I think anybody who's had, who's with battled with depression on that level, and again, it's not a competition. I'm just talking about, mm -hmm. uh, I'm talking about the severity of it. Anybody who's, dealt with it like that understands that image and when i saw it when i was going through my shit and i was just going through it again so i was just reading it and i when i saw it i was like oh fuck <laughs> do you know what i mean like it was it was just like oh it's man. hard hitting man it's hard hitting it's, it's stuff as you yeah. said that, you know we, we we go through and 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 you know millers put it into a, a comic book which is you know deeply connected to us and so many different ways you know the the, mm. the the moving forward the the hardships of doing what he does the, the 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 way kingpin tortures him we have different people in our own lives that can torture us in different ways mentally you know mm -hmm. and i think kingpin went on that route in that story where i'm not mm. gonna physically beat down this man i'm gonna mentally mm. torture this dude as well and mm. uh Kingpin, you know, got to that point where then after he was thinking, you know, there's a scene where he, oh, I can't remember, it was a couple of thugs he beat up and then drove a cab into the water thinking, you know, Kingpin thought, oh, that's it, he's done. And then they realised they bring mm -hmm. the cab out and it was like, he's 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 not there, he's not in there's there. No body. Which there's puts no kind of a bit of a worry yeah. on him because he's like, you know what, I'll, I've pushed this guy to his absolute limit. And now I've given mm. him the origin of not having no fear in the process. Yeah, the it. man without hope. Yeah, a man without hope is a man without fear. Yeah, um, and you know we we go through that. Is it that? Is that we say a man without hope? Is it a man yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. A man without hope. Right. Yeah, is a man without no fear. So like it's 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 something that we go through. I mean, we, fear plays a big part mm. of our everyday lives, and 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 how do we overcome that? You know, sometimes we're good. Mm. We could go face front with it. You know, sometimes we've got that little mm. satin in the basement that needs to come out, or you know, sometimes we take we have to do it in a process which could take a longer way, but you know, we can reach mm. our goals in different ways. I think, I and mean, this is for like the listeners in general, like, you know, most of the messages that we get is about how do you keep it up? And like, and, and I'm, and I'm honest with people, you know, my podcast is uh, me and my brother's podcast is about our mental health as well, because yes, last year mm. took its toll on me. And I, I've said that I took a break for like six weeks. I had to tell my brother, look, bro, I'm exhausted. I'm, I'm I'm really mm. out of it at the moment. Mm. I'm struggling, you know. It's not uh that, you know, yes, I had a baby, but it wasn't that the financial struggles that came with it as well, you know. Mm. Cost of living went up. Man, my mortgage doubled last year. Damn. I honestly towards the end of the year, with everything good that comes and all the good wins, I'll always continue as good memories. I always remind people, guys, it's not easy. It was a struggle. I, I barely survived last year. Because I'm thinking, mm -hmm. how am I going to put food on the plate for two kids? How am I going to mm -hmm. pay for the mortgage, which is doubled? And I don't even earn that much. Like, mm -hmm. everybody can go on, like, you know, everything's hunky-dory. But I always remind that with the good comes a balance of, I wouldn't say bad, but challenges that 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 help us guide through these. And, you know, that's the my main reason why I read comic books is, yes, that escapism, mm -hmm. but... Sometimes, man, it just inspires and motivates me. You know, the the story of Born Again and what he went through in that six to nine months. Mm. Come out at the end. Yes, there were some rough times in between, but to come out at the end and put that suit on and go do what he does. You know, when he fit, like when he mm. faces Nuke and and it's like, yeah, he gets back into his element again. You know, he's like, ah, oh, that's the, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, I've been honest with you, rereading that. That's the bit that kind of lost me a bit. I was just like, this feels like it, it works and it becomes a completely different book. And I'm like, oh, this is interesting, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. But I was just like, this feels like a remit from Marvel. <laughs> this I wouldn't feels be like surprised. Marvel's, I wouldn't Marvel be surprised. Like, okay, so we have this Captain America story coming. I would really, in. really great if you could set it up. It's going to be massive. Yeah, and then Miller was like, "Yeah, that works. Okay, great. Yeah, let's let's let's, let's chuck it in." It's always. Um, I think the first two chapters, as you said worked really well mm. by itself and that's the third part of it where you're like okay there's a bit of you know trickery in here mm. but 
you know, I, I kind of, I take, I take, I take the, the comeback for me on that one because, you know, I, 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 I had a, not the exact same battle as Daredevil, but I, I had my own battles mm -hmm. and my own challenges, which as a, as a father is, 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 is challenging because you come mm -hmm. home and your little girl's like, daddy, why you look sad? Cause I'm like, you know, I can't tell a shit. I don't know how I'm going to pay the mortgage next month. Yeah. You know, I have oh to find God, yeah, a that's, solution. That's really... I need to find a really yeah. good solution on what I do. And don't get me wrong. There are people there to help. And I think that's the main thing I want to say as well, that there are people there to help. Maybe they can't help financially, but to have a conversation about it, to talk about it, mm -hmm. to see where you can kind of work things out and to say you can get to that point. And if I didn't have those conversations with friends, family, like what I'm gonna do, how I'm gonna I don't I don't understand some of this stuff. I my dyslexia and my ADHD probably maybe not even understand a lot of the stuff that goes through with it. Uh but mm. I just need somebody to tell me because I'm a visual person. I'm a visual learner. You give me mm, something visually, visual. I'll reap it I'll 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 be able to to regurgitate that back to you. But you know I I, as I said, and I ended up making some promises this year to say that, all right, I, I worked really hard last year, very hard, and to a mm. point where it, I snapped. And I snapped at people, and I apologize to the people that mm. I did snap at. But it was because I didn't know how to... Uh, what's the word? There's a word where I couldn't output it in a creative form. Mm. I was doing it because I was angry at myself, I didn't, you know, you, mm. there's things you can catch early, you know, you know, you with, with Daredevil's character in this as well. He's, you know, he didn't catch on to these things really quickly. They mm. slowly got taken away from him. Yeah, 100%. Um, so, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's, it, yeah, that's my part of it. That's what that's what that's what I kind of take from reading that again and the encouragement and the motiv motivation of I mean, we're always going to hear it. And yes, it's cliche, but it is how we keep going forward. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, the funny thing is, you know, there's, there's the, the cliches are there for a reason because they, mm -hmm. they, they exist in some level of proof. And, exactly. um, and you know, it, it's, it's it, yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying, man. It's, um, it's a funny. It's, it's so so interesting hearing you talk about your your shit because, um, and I don't mean that in a dismissive way. I just no, no, no. Of course, no, no, no. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, because that you know that I don't have kids. I have nieces and nephews who I love uh, dearly, but I don't have kids. Um, but you know, my character in the show mm -hmm. does. He has three kids. You only see one of them. Because, you know, they're just, you know that's, that's, the, that's the one that's in high school. Um, and there was a storyline. It wasn't a storyline. I'm not, not going to say it was a storyline. It wasn't a storyline. There was a kind of a subtext to uh, how the character was moving mm. in... Um, in this series that's out. Um, and I wish we had more time to flesh it out. But at the same time, it's not, you know, it's not, there's so many characters to fulfill um, in in the show. Um, but one of the things that you were talking about was that, like, how does someone deal with, uh, in his case, it was grief. Mm. But then also, you know, Lyndon's, marriage is like he's he's he's, he's getting a divorce like mm. he doesn't see his kids as much he's kind of everything his his life as he knew it at the beginning of series 11 is just completely different and add that you know you've got the death of danny who mm. in linden's head is his jason todd you know what i'm saying like he's mm -hmm. you know he's the he's the kid he couldn't save and there was a scene that unfortunately cut got cut um, because of time. I mean, it was it was supposed to be in last week's episode, and I watched last week's episode, and I was like, yeah, I could totally see why I got cut. There's just there's 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 too many things. Too much, of... yeah, yeah. But yeah, it was a scene between him and his daughter, and um, she says, you know, she throws him a little picnic, and um, he's like, I miss you, and so on and so forth. 
and she brings up Danny. She was like, oh, you know, the, it, it must be hard, you know. And I, I mean, it's a shame. Yeah, again, it's a shame it's, it hit a cut on the floor because that was exactly what you were talking about. It's exactly what you're talking about. It's like, how do you... And obviously, your daughter's a lot younger um, than the character. The mm. Verity is like 13, 14 in the show. And as a father, you it's so interesting, like, because I made the same decision you did, even though I'm not a dad. It's like, you have to keep going, but you have to, you kind of want to shield your kid from all of the stuff that you're going through. And yeah. Yeah, I just found I just found it so interesting when you said that because I was just like, oh, that is we, that's we, we project a, ourselves a very we natural. Project ourselves. Yeah, do you know what I mean? That's obviously a very natural response where you just like you know you're. So I understand. I, again, I, I all the people that do have kids there. I know this is going to sound going to sound like a charlatan. I don't mean to, but um, on a very kind of remedial level, I understand what you're saying, especially when you have people depending on you. You can't. Again, this is a really another really bad example. No, no, it's a fine, really bro, man. You example. you always explain but yourself, I'm so hate, it's all I'm good. With it. Um, but like, I remember the first year of uni, and everybody was stressing out, man. Like, this was end of the first term, and everybody was just stressing out, and we had things that we needed to get in, and all of this stuff. And I remember being in like. on like the mezzanine floor of like the main building with a lot of my classmates. And it was really like, it was just really intense because there was so, we did mm. so many different subjects. We were just kind of like, you know, and, and I remember seeing their reactions and talking to them and just everybody, we're all in the same boat. And I made a decision. I was like, I'm feeling everything that these guys are feeling. But I'm not going to... We can't, we can't all be running around going crazy. <laughs> and so even, so even though I'm feeling everything that you guys are, I'm going to just, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to save you from it. I'm not yeah. going to, I'm not going to, yeah, I'm not, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's, you know, it's that whole thing of, oh, you know, men don't show their emotions and all that kind of stuff. And just like, well, Yeah, because sometimes, sometimes it's not always the right time. No, exactly, exactly. And this I is think something that, that one, people yeah. need to. Yes, and again, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that you shouldn't show your emotions and you shouldn't, you know, because I've I've always been a super emotional person, hmm. person, and I've actually had to. to get balance, I've had to go the other way. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Which is, I guess, one of the reasons why I did like Batman so much because mm. there was that control. There was that kind of... There was control, yeah. yeah that's right. this and just kind of like, you know what I mean? It's just like, but yeah, I I, I, I get it. I get it. Um, no. It's so funny. Like, I, I, this is totally off subject. But I want to get your thoughts on this. Go on. As I was, as I was about to... I was dragging my heels getting back into board again for some reason. And I was just kind of thinking about the story before I started rereading it. And I was just thinking to myself, isn't it funny that we have so much sympathy for characters like, you know, Daredevil and even to some degree Batman? Even though for Batman, it was just like, oh, it's so fucking cool. So you just kind of, you just like him. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't think it's sympathy, but, but like, you can have a sympathy for char characters like Matt, but like, There's never sympathy for Superman. That's a hard one because I think everybody's general uh, per per perception of that is that you know he's the 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 go to is the the all oh, strong, but you know there are stories that deep that go into like this guy is an alien from another world and he's getting it from left, right, and center, man. So you guys need to mm. show him some love, uh, and they did. I think I'm trying to remember which riot it was that. kind of uh, put it in a perspective where, you know, he struggles as well. It's not easy. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I, I don't remember what issue it was. In, in Grant, Grant Morrison's um, All-Star right. Superman. Yes, that's right. In All-Star Superman. Yeah. Uh, there is a few as well that are on there, but you're right. Yeah. It's not something yeah. that's not 
in that but like world. if you're talking about like beyond beyond like fandom beyond like people who read the, who have a vested interest in these characters and these stories <laughs> like the general public there's no sympathy for superman and i think well, Zack some, Snyder I tried think to show so it. interesting but again there's something about this idea that and i used to do it i remember i think I, we definitely spoke about this on last yeah time. yeah I used to do it. I used to watch Smallville with my mum. And my mum's a massive Superman fan. She's yeah. always loved Superman. And um, and she'll continue to love Superman. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, uh, and I remember watching Smallville and, you know, seeing, like, teenage plot, like, moping about. And I remember thinking yeah. to myself, um, like, you could do anything, bro. Like, what, what is, what, you, what, what is this? What, what, do you know what I mean? Like, you could do anything. Yeah. Like you're Superman. Like, why? What is? What is this? What's up? Yeah. And now I'm older. You get. It. And I have been fortunate enough to have. Uh, certain opportunities, and you know. Yeah, certain. Let's just say certain opportunities. It doesn't negate from the very real life, you know issues that we all come up against you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. in the same sense that like just because you can you know shoot lasers out of your face and fly and do everything that you know you could possibly uh, you know you know you could do you know you just you just can do anything no that's right that doesn't mean that you've got it set that's the, that's this, it's that same kind of mentality of like oh well you're rich what have you got to worry about it's like, yeah, okay, you know, this isn't about me, by the way. I ain't, I ain't rich. <laughs> um, but like a rich person where it's just like, yeah, where it's just like, well, you're rich. What's your, what's your, what's your problem? It's like, okay, so, but yeah, but you, so, so that person can pay the rent or the mortgage or they can buy a nice car or they can go on holiday or they could do all the things that people do with their money or, you know what I mean? And yeah. that doesn't equate to happiness, like being able to, being Superman doesn't mean that you don't have those things, but I just found it so fascinating that even now it's this kind of idea of um, yeah, you just there's just no kind of there's almost no room to it for it, and I, I think that's there's a there's a massive there's a level of hypocrisy in in the kind mm-hmm. of I can agree. In the world that. that we live definitely. in, because yeah, it's like, definitely. and I suppose if I'm good, you know, if, you know, if I'm gonna be um, honest with you and whoever decides to listen or watch, um, you know, that's something I find with, with in my life. Like I, uh, I present in a particular kind of way, mm-hmm. um, and it, you feel it sometimes. You feel it where there people just kind of when you people talk you talk to people you interact with people they don't want certain things from you mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying they want a particular cuz cuz you come across a certain way they want particular things from you they don't right. want you to be if you present as strong people don't want you to be weak they don't know what to do with that and I know it's controversial because people are just like, no, that's not true, but it fucking is, man. Like sometimes <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I mean, it's just like, it's it's that thing where it's just like, okay, well, great. So it begs the question, like, what do you, what do you do with that? Mm-hmm. No. That's I mean, true. it's like, yeah, exactly. just be yourself. And it's like, but that's all well and good. But if the perception of you in other people's eyes Outweigh, like outweighs the thing that you have and you want to express, it will be met with a certain level of resistance. Exactly. Which exactly. isn't going to, do you know what I mean? Which isn't really no. going to make it better to be, I don't know, I don't know what I'm saying. So I don't want anyone to listen to this and, and feel like I'm saying, uh, don't be yourself. Do you know I mean? Be someone else. Do you know, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. No, 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 of course not. Um, I think... I think what you're trying to say is, you know, is there's a level of how much you put yourself out there, isn't it? Uh, I think where you, you yeah. have, you have a yeah, limit, I, I think so. there's a limit of how I, 
how I am around people you know the first thing people will come up to me and you know the way, way you kind of push yourself out there you're going to have a bit of resilience before you can trust somebody before you kind of open up completely so I think I think it works around in in in, in all manners where you kind of yes I'm myself but I'm not going to give you too much just yet I'll give it to you in doses you know I think it's yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's easy for people really to smart. digest yeah. that really well because I find yeah, like I think yeah oh. I can be like that I could be overwhelming because I'm I'm so excited about something, you know. Maybe not everybody will agree, but I'm so passionate yeah. and so excited that I can't even get my words out properly, and I'm I'm losing the plot of what I was supposed to say, and because I'm just an excited kid, you know. So now I know yeah, that yeah, yeah. tone <laughs> yourself down a little bit, slow yourself down, and you realize mm. that your passion will come out in what you say because you tone yourself down. But then you know, my my wife is like, Kibbs, I have no idea what you said there." but you sound excited. And I said, yes, I am, but I'm sorry. I couldn't, you know, it, it happens. And I still have that. It's a communication problem that I think I go through, but it's because I'm so excited. Mm. Uh, and that's just me when it comes to getting a new comic book or uh, watching a new film or getting a new collectible. And it's like, wow, well, you know, I've got, I'm lost for words. And then people in the review would be like, Kibbs, I don't know what the fuck you're chatting about, but you sound like you're having fun. <laughs> as long as, and you know, and yeah, if that yeah, comes yeah. across sometimes, that works yeah. and sometimes it doesn't connect. So then I've realized how to dial myself down. And I suppose it, that happens with characters as well, mm. you know, and they, they mm. don't, you know, the one thing that get pushed about Superman is that it's hope. It's hope. It's hope. Yeah. It's hope. You look at him, it's hope. It's hope. But then it's like, hold up, dude. But then is, is, that, is that, is that, is that what Pete, this is what I'm saying. Like, yes, he is this, is, has this kind of wealth of, like, generosity of spirit and all the rest of that but like is it the fact that people look at him and see hope do you know what i'm yeah. saying is it the fact that no. when people are like oh that's his hope like he's he is he is what the idea of goodness like that gives me mm. hope but do you know what i'm saying so you don't want to see hope having a bad day yeah exactly you know it's true saying? because like, you put that veil over real. yourself like i i i look at superman when i see it and i see like the i think 1992 the John Bond series that came out, The Man of Steel, and uh, it was a six-part yeah, issue. Was, uh, uh, that uh, 92 no, that or 91? Was, no, it was earlier than that, man. So I remember having to get back issues with that. I think probably, uh, it was but, like, it was you know, the, it was the eighties. It was the eighties. That, that he, was, John Byrne was the first that's person right. to make Lex Luthor yes. a, a yuppie, like a like yes, a yes, 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 yes. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So that era when I because that was my first uh, uh, when I my first comic books when I got into comic books was because that was handed to me from my uncle and you know when i saw superman mm, in that i didn't man. see I love that. Love that yeah sense. i didn't see hope i didn't see you know his strength or anything i saw creativity bro you know we mm. see motion comic books now but when i first opened up those pages as a kid those panels moved they moved yeah bro. man they were great his there's something about like it's interesting because I don't know if you have this, but I know we're getting way off the end of it, but it's fine. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's right, it? <laughs> um, but like, um, I think that for me, the way my brain works, there are quint sometimes there there are quintessential artists for certain characters, and I don't think there's. I think it's down to indi individuals' tastes, mm -hmm. um, but I think everybody kind of has whether it's their favorite art. Whether it's their favorite artist for a character, or I, for me personally, there's certain artists who I'm just like, they 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 have to be like, as far as drawing a certain character, they have to be top three or top mm -hmm. five or whatever it is, because there's something about the way they draw them that makes them that really, uh, you know, that really kind of how can I put this? That really really kind of like encapsulate. The characters and i think john burns superman did that because he was broad chest like farm boy tall <laughs> and muscular and all the rest of that i think it i think a more extreme version of that but i still love um i've actually got like a figure of that somewhere is ed mcginnis's superman like for me when i see ed mcginnis's superman i'm just like that's <laughs> superman because ed mcginnis draws characters quite chunky so maybe he wouldn't be my choice for a Nightwing mm -hmm. artist, but he's dead. Like he's like that. Like for me, it's like when I see Ed McGinnis as Superman, I was like, "That's Superman." Do you know what I mean? Because he is. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. It looks amazing. Huge. Do you know what I mean? Like this, amazing. This larger life thing. Exactly. Yeah.
All right, bro. Thank you for your time, man. I don't want to keep you too long. And I know we can go into okay. even more. But I, what I wanted to do while we're on this call now is mm-hmm. what do we set up our next call for and not wait too long? But what what because I feel like it gives me something I because I haven't picked up something in a while, bro, to be honest, just because of how busy it's been. So reading Born yeah. Again this weekend, it gave me that inspiration to start reading again. So I started reading, where's it gone? Uh, so Devil's Rain. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've started this. It's yeah. been sitting there. Uh, I've gone through the first <laughs> couple of issues, but I'm actually really enjoying this, bro. So, but yeah. if there's something else that we could we could jump on in in the next month or two and say which ones, which which what it doesn't matter what it is, which one would you like to jump on and and and, and talk about? Uh, you know what? I was I was racking my brains. I was like, oh shit, what should I do? Uh, but the one that jumps out at me is. Um, Sean, Sean Murphy, man. Ooh. White Knight. I mean, sorry, White Knight. Cool. White Knight, White Knight. Okay, cool. White Knight, because that's a, that's another thing. Like we were talking about, like mental health and stuff. But like with with uh, Sean Murphy's work on so Batman, good. Uh, so good. The, the White Knight stuff. He it, he just he's it's so dense. Like it's so not in a not and that's not in, that's not a, that's not a cast. That's it's, that's mm. that's good. It's so. It touches on so many different things. It touches on like gentrification. It touches on, you know, on on the idea of rehabilitation. It touches mm-hmm. on the idea of the elite and how yep. Batman plays into all of those things. And you know about policing and That's all right. these things. And I just think it's um, I just I think he's this word gets usually thrown around up. I think he's a fucking genius, man. Yeah, I think yeah the way his mind right. works is just yeah. like, okay. and it's another reason why I picked up Tokyo Ghost because I love. I love White Knight. Bro, when some I read of the Tokyo best artwork Ghost, as well. Like, yeah, but I th- I feel that I feel that um I really need to put money in his uh GoFundMe for the Zorro. Yes. Um, I really need to do that because I really want to read that. I just think that I think that Sean um Murphy just has something to say. Yeah, definitely. In his he books, he does. just has in those when books. He's amazing. writing and he's drawing. He has something to say. Um, amazing. Yeah, man. So let's do let's do White Knight. Okay, we'll do that. White Knight, it is. All right, cool, guys. Uh, well, first, thank you for coming on to the show again, bro. I know it's been way too long, but now we've got yeah. this next one. So, guys, get ready. Sean Murphy, <laughs> Sean Murphy world. We're gonna get into it. White Knight. Uh, to the listeners, massive thank you to people who watch. I, I can't thank you guys enough, guys. If you can't see us on YouTube and you're on commute, we're on all other streaming platforms: Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Google Podcasts, Amazon Music. Oh my God, it's amazing. Uh, the you know it just keeps growing. It keeps growing. But we are yeah. so grateful for the love that you give to the channel and the messages that we get. I'm I'm overwhelmed sometimes by 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 the love and the messages. So thank you so much because we continue to do this, and then you guys inspire me to do this still. Even though I had a break for two months, you guys still rooted for me. Mm. And half of you hardly know me, but you probably know me through the podcast and. I I can't thank you enough for that because uh, it, it's uh, it's 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 working. I'm still here and I'm still doing it, which is amazing. So mm. thank you so much, dude. Thank you for coming on, man. Honestly, no uh, problem, man. Your for your sure. knowledge and your background in comic books really elevates conversations and 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 <laughs> you know you know because you can get people on, and you know. It's hard to say, and I'm I'm not being bad in any way, and into any of my guests because everybody has a platform that they love. But it's always mm-hmm. nice because I'm a lover of comic books, and you are as well. We could, the depth of talk and the conversation we could go on for five mm. hours. Mm. So that's that's yeah. much no, much appreciate appreciate it, for I your appreciate time. It. I much appreciate for yeah. your time, and hopefully we catch up soon, man. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Awesome. All right, cool. Let me cut it there. Bro, honestly, thank you so much for coming back on.